thank you so much for being here today. It's actually an exciting afternoon um, where we will talk and discuss and exchange about inquired by inquired based science education at home uh, in a period where we all uh, were forced to stay at home and adapt and adjust to a new reality. Uh, and um, the purpose of this event is indeed to create a moment where we all can exchange and um, reflect on what we've been doing so far. And I invited several uh, guest speakers, excellent guest speakers, uh, to be with us today and also to share some experiences uh, um, and um, their knowledge uh, on IBSE. So with no further ado, I would like to first of all say that I'm Ruth Batista and uh, currently I'm the project manager of Amgen Teach um, program at e European School Med. And uh, today we'll have a long uh, program, a very interesting program uh, with a lot of speakers. And so we will be very strict with the time. OK, so I kindly ask our speakers to uh, be strict with the time. And also during the parallel sessions, you will have 40 minutes for the discussion. And uh, we will come back after that uh, to the plenary to resume and reflect on the conclusions, OK, uh, for the last 15 minutes. You should have your details to enter these parallel uh, sessions in one message, uh, email message. And, but if you have any issues, you can always tell us on the chat when the time comes, OK? So welcome. And with no further ado, I will start with uh, Amgen Foundation. Annette Condon is here with us today, representing Amgen Foundation. And um, Annette, the floor is yours, and it's so lovely to have you with us today here. You are muted. Could you need to mute, unmute your microphone? Hi, everybody. Um, Hello. Thank you for the opportunity. My name is Annette Condon, and I represent the Amgen Foundation, the founder and funder of the Amgen Teach Program, which has been in operation since 2014, and which is based on the very principle of inquiry-based science education. My broadband isn't behaving itself today, so I wanted to introduce myself and for you to see my face, but I'm going to switch off my camera now in the interest of providing a, a better quality experience in terms of the presentation, and I'll come back on at the end again. OK, thank you. So, Rota, if you want to advance. So, just by way of brief introduction, Amgen is a biotechnology company. We're committed to discovering, developing, manufacturing, and delivering medicines for seriously ill patients. And we recognize that in order to do that effectively, we need a highly skilled scientific workforce that is representative of all nationalities. And so at the Amgen Foundation, which is the philanthropic arm of the company, we believe that everyone needs science and science needs everyone. Our mission is to inspire the innovators of the future, the scientists that will discover the new breakthroughs, but we also want to support scientific literacy for everyone. And we do this through both in-person and online programs, all designed to either provide professional development opportunities to teachers or hands-on learning for students. Hey, Rota. So I don't have to tell you, I mean, who could have predicted all of this last year? We're in a world undergoing unprecedented change in how we live, work, teach, interact with one another. Um, and from an educational perspective, COVID-19 has impacted around 90% of the world's student population. Um, and throughout this crisis, which is continuing, um, it's, there's still a lot of uncertainty as to how school will look like in the new academic year. Teachers have worked so hard to innovate and adapt in order to maintain continuity of learning, you know, often under very challenging circumstances. Um, and if there is any upside to this current crisis, I think there is now a huge spotlight on science. We're all waiting for the vaccine. There is a newfound appreciation of the role of science and education in our world. Um, and we see teachers 
as the catalyst for change. Um, and perhaps this disruptive crisis can give us a moment to pause and help us redefine what learning should look like and how we educate young people in our interconnected world. Okay, Rutta. So, you know, even before COVID-19, there was a need for change in terms of a disconnect between the educational system and work. So, you know, a lot of demands and expectations. So on one hand, you know, obviously from a societal perspective, we want to prepare young people to be informed um, citizens and skilled workers for them to have successful and fulfilling careers. Obviously, governments have a, a responsibility to prepare young people for the 21st century roles. And companies, as I said, like Amgen, you know, we need a skilled and diverse workforce. That's important in terms of innovation. It's important for all our economies to stay competitive. Um, but we hear so often that there, there is a skills gap, you know, so companies struggle to find people with the right skill sets, uh, with the right STEM skill sets, and yet not enough young people, it's improved, but still not enough young people are opting to study science. You know, at university level, I think a lot of the universities feel more needs to be done at primary and secondary school level to encourage students. And I think young, young undergraduates and graduates often struggle to find the right research opportunities. From your perspective, you know, you, you are so busy, you are trying to do so much that it's sometimes a struggle to find the time and the resources to innovate in the classroom. And so many students say science is boring and nerdy and they don't want to pursue it. Um, and I think there's also a real gap. Parents don't necessarily understand the breadth and, and range of exciting careers there are available in STEM. So we believe it's, it's time to reinvent science education. And I think the COVID-19 crisis has just reinforced the urgency of it. And this is true to the principles of inquiry-based learning, you know, moving teachers from just transmitting knowledge to being facilitators and coaches. As we say in English, moving from being the sage on the stage. Shall I continue, Rota? Or is there a problem? Yes, please. No, it's sorted. Sorry. <laughs> you know, to, to move from just acquiring knowledge to encouraging students to think like little scientists, to be curious, to explore and to apply, and to move them from being passive listeners to active participants. You know, I think there are also lessons from, from the pandemic. We've seen firsthand how globally interconnected we all, all are. There is no longer any you know, doubt that there can be an isolated issue or incident. We saw how quickly the virus spread across the world. So I think young people in the coming decades need to be able to understand these linkages and navigate across boundaries to work in a globally collaborative way. You know, I think during this crisis, we've also seen not just young people, but particularly young people. It's been very hard for young people, but I think you know, we've all seen that we've needed to be resilient and we've needed to be flexible and we've needed to adapt. And I think these are skills that will be increasingly essential to navigate in the working world. I think employers will look for young people with who are resourceful, who are creative, who are flexible, who are good communicators and collaborators, people who can harness the power of the collective through effective teamwork. And so in terms of, and of course, you know, unlocking technology was another big, you know, so all of a sudden we were all compelled to harness the technology tools to enable remote learning. And I suppose the question is, what lessons can we take away through remote learning? Can we reach more teachers and students? Can we come up with an optimized blended model where online learning complements the work in the classroom and perhaps you know, acts as a way for students to prepare for class or to revive, revise classes that have already taken place. I think there's a lot of learnings and I know um, European Schoolnet is 
is going to look at how all these learnings have worked and applied, and I'm looking forward to that research. So coming on to Amgen Teach, as I said earlier, it's been in operation since 2014, and we've reached over 4,000 teachers, primarily through um, in-person uh, training, um, reaching around 530,000 students indirectly. But I think it says a lot about the vision of the program that from the very outset, we look to do some online work. So we've had distance learning events at a national level. We've had two massive open online courses. So online has always been an important feature of Amgen Teach. Um, and there's a huge number of resources available online. And I want to pay tribute to to all of the Amgen Teach participants and the training providers, and especially our ambassador teachers who have developed these resources and published them for the benefit of other teachers. I think in particular, our ambassador teachers over the last year, um, I want to thank them for their leadership. They helped develop resources, design webinars, and provided mentorship and support to teachers throughout this whole crisis. So, a big thank you and an acknowledgement of all the work of everybody involved in Amgen Teach. And if you haven't been on the platform, I really encourage, there's a wealth of content there available in multiple languages. Um, as the topic is inquiry-based science education at home, I just wanted to briefly point to two other platforms that the Amgen Foundation is associated with. So some of you may know Khan Academy, it was founded in 2007 by Saul Khan, and he really just started making little YouTube videos about maths for family, family members and friends who were struggling with the subject at school. And it's grown into this huge program um, with basically now 80 million global users across 190 countries. The content ranges from kindergarten and preschool all the way through high school, secondary school, and even some college material. Um, and they've got 80 million global users at this point. Um, and so the Amgen Foundation sponsors the biology content. And there's around, there's over 200 instructional items there. There's videos, articles, practice questions. And there's three, if you move on to the next slide, Rita, please. There are three levels. There's introduction to biology, high school or secondary school biology, and advanced biology, which is really at college level. Um, so teachers, students, and parents can set up accounts, but as a teacher, you can create a virtual class. You can monitor the progress in different models, modules and support students who are maybe struggling in some areas. So again, a great resource for you as you continue uh, to develop content for, for, for your students. So then secondly, Lab Exchange is a fairly new platform. Imagine it was uh, it was launched in January just before this whole pandemic really kicked off. Um, and it's it's sponsored by the Amgen Foundation and developed in association with Harvard. And it's really about providing anyone anywhere access to experience science. So so many students, millions of students around the world don't have access, unfortunately to high quality science education and experiences. So Lab Exchange was launched to ensure that students everywhere had equal opportunity to prepare for and participate in science. Because whether it's due to economic or geographical limitations, too many students lack the opportunity to engage meaningfully in the process. And this leads to gaps in diversity across scientific fields and impacts overall scientific literacy. Um, so right now, the content is only available in English, but I would really encourage you to go in and have a look. It includes online learning assets, so there's instructions, videos, and assessments, but you can take the content and you can develop your own pathways. You can customize your pathways. You can change the sequence of the pathways. If you have made a video, um, you can take some content out and plug your own in. So it's very customizable, it's very flexible. It also features interactive simulations based on inquiry-based learning principles to teach students biological principles, offer insights into the research process. And so students can perform their own experiments online. And I also just want to say 
there's a network of students and researchers and educators so they can create profiles, share their learning pathways and discuss their career path and their experience of, of research. There's, um, there's a simulation there just showing the gel electrophoresis process. Um, so it will give you an idea. So the students are prompted throughout if they put too much solution in or you know, to make sure things are plugged in, um, if the fridge door has been left open. So it's, it's very interactive and easy to use. Um, and I think it will be, should be a great resource for you. So just moving on. Um, so we have another in-person program, the Amgen Biotech Experience, where teachers are trained um, according to a set curriculum and then can borrow equipment and replicate the experiments back at the school for their students. Um, and we have created those virtually here. Um, and again, I would encourage you to go in and look. And the good news is all these, these pathways are actually being translated at the moment and will be available in 14 languages in the September timeframe. So just moving to the last slide, I just to summarize three great platforms that I hope should provide you with some meaningful content to enable you um, develop remote learning resources for your students. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you very much, Annette. It was uh, great um, to see all these examples. And with no further ado, we are already a um, few minutes late. So Agida, the floor is yours. Agida is the Science Education Program Manager at European School Net. And uh, go ahead, Agida. <laughs> Thank you very much, Rute. It's uh, very nice to be here today. So, since the 1990s, uh, there has been a renewed interest in the improvement of science and technology awareness in society at large. Science -like literacy is a central concept in this context. As a first step strategy towards that target, the improvement of science education in the educational system is a must. It's kind of what Annette uh, was saying before. And the thing is that the term of inquiry-based science education, IBSC, that Rute was mentioning, has appeared in European policy documents since the ROCAR report in 2007, and has become the basic ingredient in most initiatives and calls for funding in science education in Europe. There is actually evidence that the objectives of renewed pedagogy are best achieved through opportunities for students to conduct extended investigative work and hands-on experimentation. With complements, which complements the traditional acquisition of uh, different concepts, especially in STEM education. IBSC pedagogy conveys, of course, and I'm sure all the participants here are convinced, well, better and more motivated STEM learning, more involvement, especially for girls, greater student interest in STEM than traditional teacher textbook pedagogy. We're talking about more attractive science-related studies and occupations. In fact, in, 19, in 2019, we published this teacher training and IBSC practice in Europe uh, overview where we shared how IBSC has proven to be an effective tool in addressing the challenge of improving STEM learning and making STEM jobs more attractive. And we discussed the application and impact of IBSC approaches and provided some examples of the most relevant European initiatives in STEM teacher training where inquiry-based strategies had been applied. Now, uh, in a 2018 report from the Scientix Observatory, we saw all, where we were looking at how STEM teachers throughout Europe organize their teaching practices. We saw that three out of the four teachers surveyed shared that, they're with the, shared that with their colleagues a positive vision of innovative STEM teaching, traditional direct instructions, and but basically traditional sorry traditional direct instructions remains prevalent among the most highly reported pedagogical approaches. Uh, furthermore, the study highlights the need for increased efforts in teacher professional development and initial te tra teacher training in IBSC, and an increased availability of resources and materials. So, for example, initiatives like the ones Annette was mentioning on the Lab Exchange or the, the Khan Academy are sources of those training and extra materials. Now, we did this survey two years ago, I imagine that if we did the survey now, the answer would be quite different, given that there's been a lot of uh, remote teaching of teachers uh, that they had to do it. And of course, uh, that's been tough. And we think that IBSC probably has also been impacted in that sense. 
Now, the European Commission is making constant and significant efforts to strengthen the engagement of the science and technology community and its relentless progress with, with uh, the rest of society. Now, the aim to make science more accessible to the public and increase science literacy and understanding of how science and technology affects us in our daily lives is extremely important. And as they're saying now in the, in the, in the chats, science is not only about science subjects, but it's doing it in other subjects like English subjects or non-STEM subjects. Now, it's not only the European Commission, but also private organizations like Amgen Foundation that have carried out initiatives on IBSC and teacher training. So a few of them you can see in this slide. So you have the Amgen Teach, you have GoLab, you have Science, you have the STEM Alliance. And you're going to be hearing up more about GoLab and Scientix and how they support IBSC later on. But we're obviously not done yet. It's in, it is important to continue promoting IBSC in the, in the form of organized professional development of teachers like Amgen Teach does and providing the necessary tools like GoLab ecosystem does. And the renewal of, of pedagogies for school science is not a one time effort. Just because you do it once doesn't mean you've done, you're over. It is a slow, long term, continuously redirected process that needs constant refueling from private, public and EU levels. So a few things that uh, we consider important. So, for example, the importance of contextualization of STEM practices. For example, by supporting school industry initiatives as well as connecting to real life examples is a good example there. We have also uh, essential to ensure that all teachers are supported by their peers through peer support networks, by innovative teaching materials and other resources and by large scale STEM com uh, community. Now, uh, assuming you can see the slide, because my computer is a bit slow, but maybe you'll be able to see it. So we invite students, uh, teachers to actually join the upcoming Scientix online course that is going to be launched in September through the EUN SchoolNet Academy. And is the STEM is everywhere MOOC that we already run two years ago and is going to be open for everybody again. And I'll share the link in the chat later on. Also, in terms of uh, the the integrated STEM teaching so it's, it's not about a single pedagogy like like I mean I was mentioning there uh, in the chat it's not only about one science education but it requires a multiple front approach to science education so we need teachers with a solid pedagogical background and an ever increasing tool set of resources and model best practices so IBSC combined with for example problem based learning is an example of such open and diversible diversifiable pedagogical approaches Finally, stakeholders should ensure that STEM is not taught in isolation, but integrated uh, across not only the four subjects of science, so not only science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, but with all other disciplines. And for this, we strongly recommend the Scientix and STEMIT MOOCs that are going to come out in October, which are for primary and secondary school teachers. And we hope to see everybody there in our online courses in the future. And with that, I think the important thing is that we move on to the actual examples. So, Rute, the floor is yours again. Thank you so much, Agada. So, I took control now of the slides. And to give you some practical examples, uh, I have here with us, sorry, we have here with us today, uh, Stella Magid Podolsky uh, from, uh, she's a biology, biology teacher in high school in Tel Aviv. And Stella, with no further ado, she's going to give us examples of IBSC practical resources and scientix. So, Stella. Thank you, Ruth. Uh, good afternoon. I, uh, nice to see you uh, all. Uh, I'm going to talk about scientix and IBSE practical resources. Uh, if you go, to Scientix portal and uh, you put IBSE inquiry-based science education in a sort uh, place, you can uh, reach plenty of useful resources about the inquiry-based science education. For example, uh, first of all, you can uh, reach a sales project about strateg uh, strategies for assessment of inquiry learning in science. Uh, here you can find a lot of sharing practices and inquiry and assessment units uh, a lot about uh, many STEM uh, subjects. If you want to have a materials, resources for teachers training 
uh, about IBSE, you also have uh, many resources. For example, Teacher's Guide to Inquiry-Based Learning. When you enter to this resource, you can have a description about it and you also can view it in uh, several European languages. I uh, view it in English, but you can find here uh, your own language and you also uh, can understand that here you have uh, also uh, training activities for inquiry steps and also good examples uh, for uh, usage uh, in your class as a STEM teachers. If you active STEM teacher uh, of uh, STEM or physics and you also want to uh, have some useful resources to use in your class, also, uh, you can do it uh, like I did it in quarantine from your home. You ca can also have just a second. Oh, I'm sorry. I yes, you I took exit. away the, the slides. I'll put yes. it back. Don't worry. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you could continue, uh, I will put the slides back. Yes. Later. Uh, another uh, example that I wanted to talk about it and you will see it in a minute, it's an established project uh, for physics education and you have there a useful uh, sheet that you can use with your class uh, and also you have it uh, in English or you can uh, ask from scientists for uh, translation and you will have it in your uh, language. Uh, just a second, uh, if I can... Uh, I'm so sorry. Okay. Just a second so I can put you in the right slide, okay? Thank you. Thank you and uh, sorry. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, so for establish, uh, just a second. For established uh, resources, you have uh, also uh, very good resources for your discipline. If you teach biology, chemistry or physics in secondary school or high school, you can uh, have a, a toolkit and a book of very nice resources that you uh, can use it in your class with your students. Uh, I am a biologist, so I use a lot of biology resources, but also chemistry and physics resources are very nice and the, uh, they support uh, IABSE in your class. Uh, how to start with IBSE tips from teachers and you also can have this uh, find these uh, tips on scientific portal uh, adapt lessons to the needs and aims of teaching and to the age of your students and sweat experience with your colleagues it is very helpful if multiple teachers use IBSE at one school so that they can discuss the progress of their approaches the result and the obstacles that they have encountered. And it can uh, refer to uh, ISTIN project that Agda uh, spoke about uh, it in during her uh, presentation. So how to continue with IBSE and Scientix? If you are experienced teachers and you uh, know the inquiry-based cycle and inquiry-based steps, and you feel comfortable with it, uh, the approaches, you can adapt any activity that you like from scientific resources, a repository to an inquiry-based activity. And there are plenty of activities and resources and uh, lessons plans. You can uh, have it and adapt it to uh, the inquiry-based uh, steps. For example, just a second, my computer is also slower than you uh, during quarantine uh, I did an activity with my students uh, about the moon so I found uh, some uh, nice resources from Astro Edu project about lunar landscape and some nice experiments and uh, the resource about lunar phases uh, and also nice experiment and uh, it's not a problem to combine between some uh, good resources that you can find on Scientix portal and adapt it to inquiry-based uh, uh, steps. So what do students benefit from IBSE? A lot. 
and they search for information connected to a topic, STEM topic. They learn how to choose important data. They can cooperate with their classmates even from home during quarantine. They learn how to divide up roles and responsibility. They come to realize that they can learn much from their mistakes. They can express their thoughts. They discuss the inquiry with friends teachers and parents and during inquiry they access where they are successful and what needs uh, need improvement so you also can uh, have this information and much more uh, on mass uh, for education project that also uh, you can find it on scientific portal so uh, a summary uh, you can see that uh, teachers and students are benefit from uh, IBSE and uh, you are invited to use this, it in your classes with your students and with your uh, colleagues at your schools. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much Stella. And uh, now following Stella we, ha we have Svetla. Uh, Svetla is actually a 10 year experience uh, international educator uh, and um, a STEM teacher trainer and uh, she's going to give us um, an overview, a quick overview of GoLab and IBSC. Uh, Stella, I remind you that you have uh, six minutes, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you, Ruth. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I, along with uh, my job as a teacher trainer and CLIO for STEM teachers, I'm also a GoLab ambassador. And it is pleasure and honor to be a guest speaker at today's webinar. Nowadays, thousands of schools all over the world remain closed for months already due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And in order to support them in delivering online education, we invite all schools and teachers to use the GoLab ecosystem for, for online STEM teaching. Uh, I would like to start briefly, uh, briefly, very briefly, uh, really, uh, what is inquiry-based science education? It is that students gain knowledge by answering research questions, so students already have or they develop research questions and they answer those questions by performing investigations and research and experiments and they do analysis on the data they get. So basically students act as scientists. They have a question and they try to find the answer to this question uh, by doing experiments. And the technology to enable doing the experiments, making the experiments, is actually provided by the GoLab ecosystem. Next point is how to make inquiry learning effective with the GoLab. As a teacher, you can support your students by providing them with a structure to conduct their inquiry, which is what the GoLab inquiry cycle is about and offers. It is designed to guide the inquiry learning using different phases. To start with the very first one, you can see this on the chart, uh, the very one on the top, that's the orientation phase where students get the feeling of what's going on. Next to, to follow, does the conceptualization where students can design a question or a hypothesis. Then they do the investigation, then they draw a conclusion, and the final two phases, you can see this on your right, the column on your right, these are the reflection and communication. Next tip uh, on how to make inquiry learning with GoLab is giving the students the right level of control. And um, this means that this is not to give students uh, control that is beyond their capability. Next tip should be ensuring the right level of students' prior knowledge. Students need to have uh, enough knowledge about the topic before starting the inquiry uh, to be able to conduct the task. And last but not least, that's the modern guided inquiry. It is providing students with scaffolds or apps that enables them to perform a task. 
how does the goal up um, ecosystem support inquiry? Uh, three main things. Well, there are many, many out of them, but these are the online labs, uh, the apps, and hypothetical test paths. It is how the online labs look like. These can be virtual or remote. Uh, the remote ones are uh, actual physical labs that can be geared online. Uh, these on lab, online labs are uh, interactive. So students can test their hypothesis, uh, investigate, experiment with the labs in order to draw their conclusions, which should be evidence-based. Uh, the inquiry learning apps. These are the technical solutions supporting the modern guided inquiry with scaffolds. It is to give students a little tool, this is the app, that enables them to perform a task. As a teacher, you can choose between more than 40 apps available, and these are in different languages. The hypothesis scratch pad, uh, this is an example of an app. This is based on the finding that students lack domain knowledge, how to create an interesting hypothesis, or uh, students do not know how to formulate a testable hypothesis. And this is how the scratch pad looks like, uh, as you can see on the screen. Uh, students get conditionals in terms of the domain, and the domain terms provide the content. And the conditionals help them to formulate a testable hypothesis. By dragging and dropping, students can create hypotheses they can test. Um, learners can also add, a little bit below, it can be seen well here. Uh, learners can also add their own terms using the type uh, your own box. As well as the teacher, uh, can also change the, the configuration of this tool, which is very, very supportive and useful. The platform and the tools, including the premium ones, you can see this on uh, your screen, are available free of charge. And they will stay like this forever. Uh, related to the premium ones, uh, uh, again, now at the time of this crisis, these are uh, also free of charge and they will remain like this until the end of the crisis. Fingers crossed, it, it will finish, all this finish soon. Uh, mm -hmm. So please spread this message to your colleagues and find all the details here as shown on the screen with the web links. Um, I would like to say that there are lots of news with the GoLab ecosystem. Uh, if you, as a teacher, want to conduct your lessons online and broadcast your video to your students directly within the inquiry learning space that you created, uh, we have a video tutorial at the moment. Uh, so you can do this uh, literally set within minutes. Um, something from uh, practice, Zoom is a popular tool allowing to conduct group online meetings. And in order just to add Zoom, if you use this as a platform for your inquiry learning space in grasp on your left on the screen, just click add app and choose zoom from the list of grasp apps. And um, finally, I, I wish well and hope you and your families will keep safe and happy in these difficult and challenging times. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Svetla. Um, thank you so much. I see so many nice comments on the chat. Uh, now, with no further ado, uh, I would like to also to give the floor to the Amgen Teach Ambassadors, who have uh, very nice practical examples or experiences to share um, of things that really happened during this period. And the first that I have the pleasure to give the floor is Jordi Soler Garcia from uh, Barcelona. And uh, Jordi, what happened? What can you tell Hi, us? Hello. Hello, hello Jordi. Everyone. Can you hello. hear me? Yes, perfectly. Perfect. So uh, um, as um, I, you have been saying, uh, my name is Jordi Soler. 
and I work in the city of Barcelona and also in the University of Barcelona. And I will be talking on behalf of Ambient Teach Ambassadors together with Renata Sidorok. And since we are behind schedule, I'll try to be very synthetic. So let's just start. Here you can see a picture of all the Ambient Teach Ambassadors. Here you can see me, Jordi Soule and Renata. And we teach, uh, Amgen Teach Ambassadors are expert, te expert teachers. We were selected in February 2019. And our purpose is to help disseminating the Amgen Teach program and sharing our experience in inquiry by science education in our, in our countries with uh, different teachers. So right now, uh, as you can see, we are ambassadors from five different countries. So let me start with this uh, piece of news. We all could read in April 24th when the coronavirus pandemic was at its peak. And as you probably remember, Donald Trump said or suggested that disinfectant ingestion could fight the coronavirus. So just a day later, we could read this uh, new information saying that a bunch of people in New York got it intoxicated after drinking uh, disinfectant. So our, teach, our, our duty as teachers is just to prevent that a group of people believe that drinking disinfectant is a good idea. And in, in, in a more polite way, so as a science teachers, we must help students to acquire and develop a series of knowledge, skills, and attitudes so that they can become scientifically competent citizens. And this is among other skills. So they need to understand, analyze information in a critical way. We must help them assessing risk and consequences. We must um, um, help them make critical decisions and act by adopting ethical positions and promoting social actions. That is, we need to train people to have scientific reasoning skills and a critical view of the world. So then we can prevent them from drinking disinfection to cure coronavirus, for example, or to believe that vaccines uh, cause autism. Uh, precisely in the parallel session, IPC and skills for the future, we will have the opportunity to discuss which are those skills that are required to build, to build a democratic, and a scientific competent society. And actually, um, just like Sveta already said, and she did really, really well. So the inquiry-based science education, IPC, is a great methodology, a great strategy to promote the development of all these skills. I mean, IPC promotes an inspiring way of learning science by, by doing science, just like she said. And as I said, we are behind schedule, so I can't go into detail about the nature of the methodology, but there are plenty of articles in the internet where you can read about it. And um, I don't know if you will have the presentation, but the Zveta presentation was so, so good. And also, if any of you are fluent in Catalan, uh, you can watch the seminar here down where I talk about the application of IFC in the classroom. And of course, um, our duty as ambassadors. Um, also, if you have any questions on how to get involved and implement IFC in your own classroom, you can contact me or any other Amgen Teach ambassadors that you have the website in, the, in this presentation. And we will be really, really happy to help all of you. Just to finish, I have been really, 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 really fast, as I said. I will end my talk with a quick example of an IPC activity I did with my students during this uh, period where schools were closed. So we were working from home. So I can demonstrate to you that IPC activities can be done with very few resources. So one of the activities that I, I don't know in your countries, but in, in Catalonia and the whole of Spain, one of the activities that become more fashionable during this school lockdown was baking. So all families here in, in Barcelona decided to cook bread and pizza with children. I don't know why. I, I also did that, but I don't know why. And this fashion was that big that the, even the yeast ran out from the supermarkets. And actually in this graph, you can see how Google searches on how to make bread 
Concepa in Catalan. And um, so increased really, really fast from this first day of the, of the lockdown. So um, in the middle of the, of the lockdown, when I made video calls with my students, most of them had already made bread. And at that time, I decided to take that opportunity and to start an IPC activity on this fermentation. And the students, by the way, had like uh, 12 and 13 years old. So in the parallel session, I, I take advantage of that. And I would like you to also to share some experiences and resources you have been using during this homeschool uh, period. So in brief, let me go next. Yeah. In brief, I just first uh, ask students to make homemade pizza. I mean, like the dough and everything. Here you can see some of them. The first pizza is mine pizza. So while they were cooking the dough, I promote observation by asking questions such as like, what change did the pizza do so far after the 30 minute break? Why did it happen? And, and all of them contributed to the shortage of the of the yeast in supermarket. I mean, all of them had bought the yeast in the supermarket, but anyone knew the reason why they had used them. So once we had to change opinions about the process, I encourage them, the students, with other questions. So I ask it, for example, if we had had more yeast, the dough would be bigger enough to make two pizzas or some similar questions. And then I propose to the students to propose uh, investigable questions and to um, hypothesis, of course, and to design experiments to answer these questions. I have to say that these uh, students were really well trained, so we have worked that like the the method, the scientific method at class. It was not the first time they did that, but they did really well. And for instance, some of the questions they investigated were so, for example. Does, does the rise in the dew volume depend on the amount of yeast or on the amount of sugar? Or has the water temperature something to do with the rise in the, de in the dough volume? And finally, the students wrote a scientific article to explain their experiences. We uh, worked that with the, with the teacher of, uh, in the this Catalan language, uh, ma um, yeah, of language Catalan. So, this is my the end of my intervention. I thank you so much for your time. I hope you found it useful. And if you have any questions, as I said before, you can contact me by email or by Twitter. Or and and now you can uh, take my the lead of the presentation and leave it to Renata Sidrok. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Jordi. Uh, actually, we have a quick, very quick question for you uh, on the chat. Yeah. I think it's interesting to know already. What's the age of your kids? 12, your 13 students? years old. Sorry? It's the first year in Spain of the secondary education. They have 12 so, years old. 12. OK, 12 excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, we have very nice comments on the chat. I'm sure you'll get the time to to catch up on the, on the comments that you have on the chat. Yeah, of course. I'm going to write yeah. it now. So before we, I give the floor to the Polish colleagues, I actually would like to highlight that we actually have the support of three um, uh, Amgen Teach ambassadors, ambassadors in this uh, in this uh, webinar. So Jordi, Renata, as Jordi was saying, and also Jale from Turkey. She's going to moderate one of the parallel sessions. So I would like just to mention Jale as well. Um, so with no further ado, the next uh, speakers are from Poland, and they are going to present all together uh because they actually worked together so we want to actually share this experience of working together uh training providers ambassadors ibsc experts so we will have renata anna jacob peter and lucas uh speaking uh to us today so the first one if i'm not wrong will be renata right yes lucas lucas will be lucas the sorry yes. lucas is that you know you give me the floor that. Jordi told that that now is the time for Renata. Renata. Oh, Jordi, it's not her time. Greetings from Poland, everyone. Greetings. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You know what? You know what, Ruth? You remind me one thing. Please listen, listen. This presentation, your speech and everything reminds me that I have been uh, an Ipsa trainer for 10 years. Can you imagine? And I still look so soft, so nice. So 
be part of, uh, of us, Co concentrate with this uh, project, Amgen teacher projects. I'm looking still so fresh, <laughs> as you can see us, always you. How about you, Ruth? Could you give us something about you? I felt like a Eurovision contest, so maybe <laughs> now is the time for your speech. How about you? <laughs> well, I can tell you more about me at the end, since you only have 10 minutes. <laughs> so. Yes, yes, I know. But now, please start <laughs> counting the time, just now. Yes. Hello, Just one now. more time. It's our time, Polish time, of course. My name is, is Łukasz Sporny. I am a, a Ipsy trainer, yes, in, in this program, uh, especially from Poland. But as you can know, we are going to speak about the pandemic time, COVID and other. So let me start. In the middle of the March, the Polish government closed Polish uh, schools at one day. And then everything stopped in one moment. And we had two options. First of it, complete trainings and share ideas with other teachers, helping each other, of course, in Poland. And the second one, wait, wait, and wait. The ministry and our government of education, ministry of education, give us first help and first advice and first tips in the middle of the May. So you know, IPSA teachers, ambassadors, experts, it was the great time for sharing between other people. As, as you can see on this slide, Warsaw Center of Education and Social Innovation and Trainings. It's a very long name, but you know in Poland very long name means that it's very important institution, yes, allows us to finish our IPSA project, to finish our trainers and everything and sharing and try to imagine. We organize an IPSA week uh, many other webinars that include something about 3,000 of people? Yes, I think so. Please, uh, please, maybe it's a good time. I want to be so much interactive with you. You are sitting near in, in your country, in your, of course, town. And I would like to know, please write in the chat uh, from which country you are. I will read it. It's very interesting to me. You know, it's something about 100 persons here yeah so so it we oh from poland from poland wow i'm not the only one from poland okay 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 and as ruth said we only get 10 minutes so now is the best time to give a voice for our the best the strongest woman from the poland ips ambassador renata shidoruk sawaducha so dear renata, uh, dear renata you can turn on your camera and unmute your microphone and Renata, Renata will be speaking about the uh, competition. Competition, yes, yes, that's right. So Renata, please uh, remember, try to take control of this presentation. Now is the time for click. Yes, this I button. took control. Yes, now is the time for closing my, closing my face, my mouth and other, and I'm giving voice to Renata, the best of the best. Okay, but something uh, was happened because uh, someone stopped my presentation. Yes, oh, yes. You did it. No, yes. Put it again. <laughs> mm. Ruth, you can, Ruth, you can help us, yes? Re yes Renata, yep. Renata, don't be afraid. Maybe okay. I will introduce you, yes. You can uh, read something about Renata. First of all, Georgie told something about her. As you can see, the Renata name is Rafał Sołoducha. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> Please tell us, what is this? Rafał Sołoducha? It's a... Yes, because it's uh, my husband account uh, of this um, um, Teams, yes? Yeah. So that's why uh, my name is Rafał Sołoducha, because it's uh, account of my, my husband account, yes? But... Uh, Truly, I am Renata, and of course, I am from Poland. I am uh, Amgen Teach Ambassador. I am teacher, and I cooperate with um, some computer assisted education and information technology center in Warsaw. Uh, so that's why I want to talk about uh, some kind of competition. And uh, one minute, because I don't know where is my slides now, because a lot of people presented the uh, presentation and I don't know where is my slide. So please uh, 
for a few minutes. I'm going to uh, correct uh, correct um, slides. Um, as, and as you can see, Renata, thanks from <laughs> Amgen Foundation, has got a great glasses. Yeah. He looks pretty well. She's got a great hair and the great color, and now she's working very hard. Okay, yes. and I am. <laughs> I'm come back, and my okay, presentation. Okay, so I'm. You know, I'm turning off my microphone, Renata. I'm still looking at you. Don't okay. click the same button. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, mm, my topic is competition, technology in the world of science. And this competition is our uh, virtual child um, who is already five years uh, old because it's a fifth edition of uh, this uh, contest. And uh, the technology in the world of science contest is designed to provide extra support for schools in the Mazovian Voivodeship. Uh, the support plan is uh, tailored to the needs of a facility after diagnosing strengths and weakness in the use of modern technologies. And uh, this year, uh, this competition uh, mm, was completely in the virtual world because of the pandemic situation. So students cooperate uh, together using uh, some platforms and make all this uh, project uh, via internet. And um, uh, the fifth uh, edition of this competition and the main goals were to select the most original innovative educational project presentings, uh, to spread nature knowledge with IPSE uh, and developing uh, teams uh, working uh, skills. And uh, mm, in October, we organized in um, our center um, some conference uh, which opened the competition. Uh, there was lots of guests and they were, uh, they talked about uh, many different topics um, which uh, um, were useful for preparing a project. So first was Office 365 Adventure with a digital map and how to design and perform experiment with PASCO sensors, because we use it, uh, this, uh, uh, this, um, uh, this um, sensors. And the assumption and regulation of the competition technology in the world of, uh, of science. And uh, the results were announced uh, on June uh, in our on the, the our website, and um, students um, who take uh, who took play uh, who took part in our competition were from uh, um, all schools uh, in Voivodaship, uh, Mazovian Voivodaship, and uh, they prepare lots of uh, nice presentation. And uh, why is our competition so unique? Uh, because um, uh, this competition encourages students to, to learn critical creative thinking, to learn science more effectively, uh, encourage students to, uh, to use uh, IPSE, to use uh, information technology, uh, which is very important these days, especially when we talk about, uh, about uh, science. And I think it's time for some example. Uh, there is uh, one uh, um, project uh, which uh, our students prepared. Uh, it was about smog. And um, students um, give some uh, research problems. Uh, do our apartments protect us against air pollution? Can you measure the level of air pollution using uh, inexpensive equipment? And uh, in recent months, students under the supervision of teacher have measured the level of air pollution in various places. 
And it was a very nice project because students prepared um, some uh, measurement uh, devices using the Arduino uh, microcontroller, which helped them uh, perform this task. And the conclusion was the interiors uh, of houses do not always protect us effectively enough against a smog and chip sensor measured, um, for example, PM10 levels more accurately. And uh, uh, students collected uh, measurement data and saved it in form and graphs and tables and compa compared the results with those of local measuring stations. And what is the future? Future is, of course, the sixth edition of our competition because it's a very nice, um, uh, nice competition and a nice contest. Uh, which can um, which can help students improve their science uh, knowledge in nice way because they cooperate and uh, can uh, together make some very nice experiments using IPSE and technology. And thank you very much. That's all. Thank you, dear Renata. Lucas, I would like to remind you that you have three minutes. Okay. No, no, yes. no. There was. It was a many uh, technical problems. It's not Renata's yeah. fault. It's our platform fault. Yeah. So the next one presenter, Renata was uh, and still is uh, IPS ambassador. Now is the time for IPS expert. Anna Żertka, could you turn on your mic? Can you? Hear? Yes. Yes. Uh, Anna, I am. Of course, Anna Żertka is a teacher, uh, young teacher, very nice, as you can see at the photo. Uh, you have very nice, familiar, friendly face, of course. And I'm just joking. She will be talking about the sketchnoting and using sketchnoting uh, with in her work, as I believe. So, Anya, I'm giving you voice. Please don't do not be afraid. It will be great. Yes, please okay. remember. Just smile to me because I'm going to do a print screen. Okay, and the mic is yours. Please start. Thank you. Hello. To begin with, uh, I teach science by making uh, colorful sketches for my students. It has been proof they make great support in learning because our brains love pictures. Uh, this method may, uh, may be a wonderful solution for children with various disabilities and for flankers. Sketch notes are fantastic help for learners of all ages, from kindergarten to adults. Visual thinking is useful when preparing worksheets as well as a good way of revision. You can see my drawings on my Facebook. Uh, secondly, I am a leader of amazing Polish project called Invite Me to Your Lesson, where teachers from whole country can swap school for one lesson. That's a great idea by Polish teachers. You can invite your best friend as a support to your lesson. What's more, journalists, firefighters, nurses, travelers, and other people with interesting occupation can also make great speakers. I have recently made presentation in uh, 20 schools in different parts of Poland, where I spoke about creative notes making. On the other hand, I have invited 14 best teachers I know to teach students at my school. They are true experts in subjects like history, biology, English or IT. My greatest lesson though took place one month ago when I invited an IBSE expert, Grażyna Wiatrowska, who is a biology and chemistry teacher. The second presenter was a Paul who lives in South Korea, in Seoul. They met online with my students and I was the host. Time, distance or cultural differences were not important. It was an incredible lesson because Grażyna not only taught my students about Polish dishes based on pickled vegetables, but she also taught about fermentation and positive aspects of natural healthy diet. Moreover, Kasia from Korea told us about tradition and history of kimchi. Uh, we learned about various kinds of this delicious dish and about a huge kimchi festival. It turned out we have more in common what, than we thought. To sum up, it was a cross-curricular lesson of chemistry, biology, Polish and Korean traditions, history and geography, all in one. In the time of pandemic, this project is still developing in, Polish, in many Polish schools, and I strongly believe it should be continued next year. 
to be honest, we aren't paid for this, but we are doing it because we would like to change the Polish education. I really believe that this is the beginning of edu revolution in Poland. Thank you. For your attention, of course. <laughs> Of course, of course. And the next one slide, Anya, could you click the next one slide? OK, next okay. one slide. And now is the time for transparent. Now with the transparent, Poland loves root. And next five minutes. The next one guest from Poland is Jacob Sypniewski in Polish, Jakub Sypniewski. Um, he's very strong person who is teaching uh, uh, geography, science uh, and other. Kuba, are you here? Are you? Uh, hello, Lucas. Hello. Yeah, I'm here. Yes, you are a PhD student. Yes, of geography. Yeah. Uh, active teacher. You are working in a primary school, uh, living in Poznań, and you are awesome. Please, now it's your time, Ruth. Please remember, I'm showing you transparent from Poland. Poland <laughs> love Ruth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Now it's your time, Jacob. Jacob. Okay, um, thank you, uh, thank you, Lukasz. Uh, so, uh, teaching geography and uh, science online, I think especially because of uh, methods characteristic for uh, the subject, uh, was a great challenge for teachers in Poland. And um, uh, in the commentary to the core curriculum for teaching geography in Poland, uh, we read that uh, in geographical education, um, it is, uh, Oh, yeah, it is important to move away from using expository methods and to move uh, to the inquiry based science education. And I think that uh, it is what I uh, really wanted to show to the teachers during uh, remote teaching that we can really activate our students by using simple materials and uh, use inquiry uh, teaching elements. Uh, first example is a lesson about the uh, respiratory system. Oh, yeah, uh, but we didn't talk only about vitals, uh, but also about gases like oxygen or carbon dioxide. Um, students prepared their own research kit composed of potato, uh, hydrogen peroxide, matches, candle, skewer, and uh, we recognized oxygen using this uh, simple materials. Uh, the second example is um, a lesson, it was a lesson uh, um, connected with uh, recognizing landforms. Uh, and this is, uh, you can see on the, in the picture, our, our kit, it was also very simple. Uh, I think so simple that a student who forgot it uh, for the lesson prepared it uh, in 30 seconds. Uh, it were flour, oil and plastic container. Uh, so we got uh, kinetic scent uh, on the basis of descriptions uh, of landforms written in poem. Uh, students made uh, gorges, valleys, mountains and hills, and there was um, a lot of fun. But what is um, the most important, I think, um, every student uh, worked actively despite the distance uh, between us. Uh, oh, you, you can see uh, there are uh, student uh, works of uh, students, uh, the hills, mountains, and 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 so on. Okay, we talk also about IBSC uh, at uh, geography and science um, during uh, quarantine on many webinars. For example, Piotr Śwital and I took part uh, in twinning webinar uh, experiments around global warming. So we prepared uh, experiments from uh, Flipbook, which we call for it as a part of Engine Teach program. Uh, speaking as briefly as it's possible, uh, we experimentally tested uh, the impact of global warming on uh, marine organisms. Uh, I also work in um, teacher training center in Poznań when I uh, co-organized the webinar with my colleagues from Urban Science Program. So we, we showed some ways of uh, conducting uh, field uh, ob observations uh, and collecting results by students their own. For example, um, connected with air pollution testing. Uh, in the picture, you can see uh, our uh, measuring is instrument uh, prepared from uh, paper and uh, tape. So uh, thank you for attention. And because of a very short time, uh, if you feel disappointed, please contact me via email. Thank you.
Thank you, Jacob. Of course, as, as, as Ruth says, we still have two minutes, so don't be afraid. Now is the time for the most handsome man from Poland. Piotr Śwital, are you there? Are you there? Yes, I'm here. And maybe one Hello. information. Ruth told us that she is recording this uh, presentation. So if you would like in, I don't know, in next week, maybe other time, you can one more time play this uh, uh, webinar and read <laughs> what we have on the slides. Yeah, now listen and look. Uh, so, Peter, are you there? Yes, thank you, Lucas. Uh, Okay, during the pandemic, uh, video conferencing has uh, become the main tool to communicate uh, with others and keep up with our work. Uh, we started uh, a group on Facebook and invited uh, all to join. Uh, it was a great way of sharing important information uh, and staying updated. Uh, sometimes, um, we were also sending packages uh, with materials if someone didn't uh, have them, for example, shells that uh, were needed for the experiment, uh, like when a friend sent a box of shells collected by the Baltic Sea to a person who doesn't uh, live there. Uh, we didn't meet the students in person, but uh, we did all the online experiments together. Uh, we sent worksheets um, and materials to our students. Uh, after reading worksheets, uh, they were doing experiments uh, at their homes. Uh, for the experiments, they were using things found uh, at home. For example, vinegar shells, uh, eggshells, and then the students uh, made films and took photos. Uh, our students also made uh, pancakes. Uh, following the recipe, uh, we sent them which uh, was in the worksheets uh, made by IBSC uh, experts. Uh, during the lockdown, uh, when schools remained uh, closed in Poland, we were very supportive. We organized conferences and trainings so every teacher could sign up for free. Uh, we will contact other teachers via the internet even after the pandemic ends. Uh, this kind of communication is very fast and makes uh, talking to a person who lives on the other side uh, of Poland possible. Uh, I think um, this is uh, really cool. Okay, thank you. Oh, you are <laughs> great. L listen, dear people, could you see Peter? He really looks handsome. Okay, okay, but Peter, the most interesting thing and maybe the most interesting and powerful word is sharing or engagement. I believe so. What do you think about this? Yes, and in this time, as you can hear, our IPSE teachers, IPSE experts, IPSE ambassadors was sharing a lot of ideas and it was a great pleasure being, uh, being Polish part of the Amgen Teach program. So thanks a lot. Thanks all the speakers from Poland. Thank you very much. Peter, now you can turn off your mic. But as I can hear, you are having a very great microphone just right now, yeah, after the pandemic. And you know, thanks a lot for this uh, uh, this time, Ruth. Thanks a lot for the extra minutes. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but it's all my fault. Please remember. And all chat, all participants, thanks a lot for your attention. I'm sending you a great kiss to my to my mic and the best wishes from Poland. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Lucas. Thank you, Lucas. Thank you, all the presenters. It was indeed very nice examples of how to implement IBAC at distance, uh, which we hope that inspire you for the discussions on the parallel sessions. But before we go to the parallel sessions, which won't have 45 minutes for discussion, we will have to shorten it to 30 minutes, but I think it will be still enough. Um, we will now give the floor to our colleagues, our training providers, Amgen Teach training providers from Turkey, Gulsha and Elif. Uh, Gulsha and Elif, are you there? Hello, Ruth. And Hello. everybody from Turkey. Uh, within the scope of Amgen Teach training, every country design and run uh, UPSA training face-to-face -face training, but with the pandemic, we had to transform our face-to-face -face training to online training. 
Uh, but regardless of being face-to-face -face training or online training, as development workshop, we always make sure that our training includes these three components. So what we do is that, first of all, we immerse our participant teachers in inquiry-based activities within the selected science topic, so that uh, they can experience this whole process by themselves as learners. Then, by reviewing teachers' own inquiry experience, we help them confront and construct an understanding of learning and teaching. Why is it important to do pedagogical discussions? Because the existing literature shows that teachers' beliefs color their reality. So, we also try to form a community of practice in our training. So, we create opportunities to form different teacher groups each of which consists of a group of teachers who share a concern or passion for something to do, and they learn how to do it better as they interact regularly. So in short, in both face-to-face uh, -face and online training, we were always hands-to-hand. -hands. And if you wonder how our uh, training looks like, I would like to share the program of our online training. In, in beginner level training, there were teachers who uh, haven't participated in MGM Teach training before, while in advanced training, uh, there were teachers who participated in MGM training before. Uh, both in beginning, uh, beginner and advanced level online training show that doing asynchronous sessions before or after the synchronous sessions are important for having complete understanding. We also saw that, as Lucas mentioned, having experienced teachers share their experience with novice teachers is really crucial for teachers' professional development. And uh, now I would like to give the floor to Gusha. Thank you for listening. Uh, thanks, Elif, and thank, uh, hello to everyone. Um, throughout our training, we collected written and verbal feedback in order to revise both next session of our training and training uh, program in general. Uh, we would like to share some teacher feedback to discuss the structure of engine teach training, as Elif mentioned. Uh, firstly, our participant teachers thought that uh, engine teach training provides an opportunity for them to rethink their perception and belief on learning and teaching. This is so important to create change in teaching practices. Secondly, teachers thought that their professional motivation and excitement to implement IPSE in their classroom increased. Thirdly, teachers thought this training supported teacher interaction during and after the training. That means increasing the level of profession-based interaction among teachers is so crucial. Uh, one of the common questions in teachers' mind during the pandemic is uh, whether and how to implement IPSE in online platforms. Uh, as you've seen in the screen, screen uh, uh, one of the, our teachers thought that this online training is the model of how to implement UPSE in the online platform. Uh, based upon the teacher's comments, one of the differences of MGM Teach training from other training is to support teachers' professional development after the training. Uh, we ensure ongoing professional development in two ways. Uh, one is to conduct school visits. The other one is to provide online support. Um, as an example of follow-up support, we encourage teachers to form working groups during the training, uh, to work together after the training. Uh, in this year, uh, three working group was formed. Uh, one of them is uh, how to merge IPSA and STEM. Uh, one of the teacher group uh, is working on how to create interdisciplinary IPSE implementation. Uh, the last one is the uh, how to integrate IPSE into the scientific issues. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, 
We are very happy to be part of Engine Teach community because of touching students through teachers. Uh, you can follow the development workshop from social uh, media accounts uh, on the uh, slide. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you, both of you. You were actually quite quick. Thank you so much for sharing that. And it's very interesting to see uh, a perspective from uh, a teacher uh, trainer or a training provider uh, also, because we cannot only speak on uh, how on the relationship teacher student, but also we need to talk about the training that teachers receive. And indeed, uh, Amgen Teach has done a, a lot uh, on this regard and, and all the countries that are involved actually provide uh, actually have several training providers working closely with the teachers and we also wanted to highlight this that teachers are not alone and that can they can actually enjoy um, several uh, training opportunities in their own countries. Uh, so thank you to all the speakers. Now I'm taking control of the presentation. Um, actually this uh, timing is uh, yeah it should be correct. So we will have uh, different um, I don't know why. Oh, yes. No, yes. No, it's looking correctly. My slide. So uh, we will have now parallel uh, theme sessions. We will have uh, actually six groups uh, talking about uh, three topics, IBSC and skills for the future, IBSC and remote teaching and IBSC and teacher training. You selected before uh, during the registration for this event, you selected the topic that you were interested in and you should have received the confirmation uh, of the group that you are in in one email from Mattia Gentile. So uh, if you have doubts on the group that you should be in, uh, you should go to Mattia's email uh, address. Also, uh, email address, no, sorry, email message. Uh, so um, also in that same email, you should have the access to a very specific room uh, that you should enter, okay? For these uh, specific sessions, we will have uh, different moderators who will lead the discussion. Uh, I kindly ask you to be back here at 5.45 Brussels time. Uh, and now I leave you to go to the different parallel sessions and I will be waiting for you here at 5.45 Brussels time. So in this part of the of this webinar, we will just here in two minutes each, I will ask the different moderators to present the, the main results of the discussions in two minutes. OK, um, and for this, I will actually stop sharing. I will ask everybody to disconnect the cameras if possible and we will only have the six cameras of the moderators on the screen. OK, I think it's nicer that we see only the cameras of the moderators. If that's OK, all the moderators also, if you don't mind to connect your cameras. Everyone else, if you could disconnect only the moderators with the cameras on. And I will stop sharing my slides. Yes, excellent. So I have here Jordi, I have Adriana, I have Mattia, I have Jale, I miss Miriam and Martina. Anita, may I ask you to disconnect your camera just for a second? Oh, you don't have the camera on. OK, uh, Miriam and Martina, are you there? And Jordi, maybe you had some issues and uh, you were kicked out. OK. So Jordi, with, are you with us? Yeah, I am with you. Yeah. OK, yeah. excellent. So I just miss Miriam. And Martin and Martin is there. OK. So maybe we can start with you and Mattia, Jordi. Is that OK? So you were uh, both with the group uh, that were discussing IBSC and skills for the future. So what was the main questions that uh, you focused your discussion on and uh, what was the main result? Maybe Jordi, you first and then Mattia. OK, yeah. Uh, well, we had very short time to discuss. It's a pity. So maybe we could 
continue this discussion in another time because I think it was very interesting that part. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and um, so in this very short time, we got uh, we discuss it, which are the twenty first century skills or what we call the skills for the future that our students need to develop to to live in our society. So we just numbered a lot of them in a Padlet, and then we try to say how we science teachers could help these uh, uh, students to 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 develop these uh, these skills and competencies. And then we, um, Nat uh, Natalia from Barcelona, explained it, uh, her experience during this um, school lockdown. So that we are really depending of technological of of technology. So maybe that we have to be prepared for next time. And because uh, doing class, I actually we were not doing class, but teaching and learning from home is very different different from teaching and learning from in the school. And then we talked about a particular and very concrete um, tools to uh, to practice remote teaching and learning and more concretely, concretely in IBCI um, activities. Then we couldn't uh, discuss anything else because we didn't have more time. Okay, excellent. Thank you for sharing. And indeed, maybe this oh, wow. is the next the next item or the next topic for the uh, an Amgen Teach webinar. IBSC and skills for the future. Who knows? <laughs> and we have more time for uh, for sharing. Mattia, do you have something else to add to what Jordi mentioned? Yes, actually. So we, even though we did not have uh, enough time to cover all the topics, I am mm -hmm. going to share uh, the Padlet that we uh, we worked on. Excellent. So um, we went very quickly through the topics, just trying to uh, cover as much as we could. Um, within, of course, uh, COVID is always uh, one of the topics that comes up in, uh, in conversation and uh, which led basically uh, all of the points that we discussed. Uh, within the uh, 21st century skills, um, many of the, uh, of, uh, of the, uh, the audience uh, highlighted critical thinking being uh, one of the most important parts of the 21st century skills. Uh, collaboration and creativity are highly uh interconnected um of course during these times uh we got uh used to new platforms and uh, uh new ways of, of teaching and so creativity is not only connected to uh the students but also to teachers to adopt new uh, new ways of uh, uh of including that uh, digital digital competences of course uh was uh was one of the most important items and, uh, and adapting to different times. So even when creating new activities, always um, connecting it to the um, to the cult well to the let's say the the, the time that you're living. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we moved on to IBSE uh, being interconnected with uh, with the skills uh, for the for the students, uh, and that was. We, we skimmed through that very quickly because we thought that it was uh, it was highly connected to the uh, 21st century skills as um, as IBSC uh, tries to um, to connect the, mm -hmm. the let's say the 21st century skills that we have now and we're uh, getting students for the future. And um, one thing that uh, Renata actually highlighted was uh, the social and communication skills, the so-called soft skills. Uh, mm -hmm. that perhaps the school could be concentrating more, especially in uh, in science subjects. Then the next one that we focused on was uh, teachers uh, ready for the technological change. Of course, we saw that uh, in the past few months uh, during the, the, the emergency, um, a lot of the teachers uh, that uh, that were in the in the room uh, were very active with the times. Uh, a lot of the digital skills were um, were developed in the past few weeks. Um, mm -hmm. Many items were discovered, and then this conversation flew basically uh, very smoothly to uh, IBSC at a distance and um, the 
platforms that we can use because in these times, of course, face to face uh, trainings were less common and a lot of new tools were discovered. For instance, uh, GeoGebra was highlighted, Lab Exchange as well, uh, Qs's GoLab uh, and all the and all the other ones. And then as regard with regards to uh, resources, um, of course, we have the Amgen Teach portal where uh, we uh, every every now and then we publish new resources and uh, the Scientix portal as well, GoLab and uh, Nada highlighted uh, Webu Conigat, which I did not know the existence of. And uh, and then we uh, we finished with uh, with a little summary, and uh, and that is it from uh, from my side. Excellent, thank you so much, Mattia. Maybe you could share the URL of that Padlet on the chat. On the chat actually, of course. yes, so that the others that could not uh, attend this group maybe want to still add after this webinar and uh, create some exchange in that Padlet, if that's okay with you and Jordi, because I know that you shared the Padlet. Uh, that would be uh great yes jordi please thank you so much uh okay so i hear that um first of all i see one hand raised uh if you have questions you can write them on the chat uh later on after we finalize the presentation of each group we can also give the floor to one or two people depending on the time that we will have but if you have like any burning question, you can already write it on the chat. So moving on with the presentations, I hear that uh, our colleague Miriam is having some connection issues. So we will leave the IBSC and remote teaching as uh, for, for last, okay? As the last topic that we will present, okay, Adriana? So we'll go now with uh, Jale and Martina. So um, Jale, would you like to start? And then Martina will add. My electricity went off. I had a big price. Thank you. My back now. Okay. Uh, yeah, because of the time limit, you know, we didn't uh, talk too much. We could discuss. But what we have done, we talk about the components of IBSE uh, approach. Uh, and we, we started with the essential question. And we talk about the, well, actually, I talk about, I um, uh, highlighted the importance of the superpower of the essential question. Uh, what bring what advantages gives us to uh, to have an effective lesson, and then uh, all the guest speakers already mentioned actually the the purpose of the uh, and the benefits of uh, or advantages of the IBSE lessons. So we were all agree with that. That's why we we wanted to talk about how to design an uh, IBSE. How how can we design an IBSE lesson? After that, it's after quick quick quick. Uh, she highlights uh, some teachers. One teacher mentioned that in her school, I can't remember her country, I'm sorry for that, but she mentioned that young teachers are more interested in IBSE approach or, or new, new methods, but it's difficult to convince the older teachers, especially teachers above 60 ages. Uh, so they, they want to know how to convince what, how to convince those teachers who are resisting to new techniques maybe. Uh, and they really want to know how to involve them, how to encourage or how to motivate those teachers. They are looking for different ways for that. And another teacher, for, again, sorry for the country, can't remember. Uh, it's a, her school is the PYP school. Um, she said that she, they all have, uh, in, the, in their school, they have uh, a good quality, a good amount of resources uh, for this transdisciplinary uh, issues also. But they are looking for collaborative, collaborative, collaborative meetings. Uh, so I suggested, if you want, for all teachers, I said, if you if you'd like to stay in touch with us, email us so we can, if you want, we can set a meeting time and we can specifically talk about. Uh, we can choose a topic and we can work on it all together and we can discuss how to convince those teachers. Uh, maybe uh, if you do a, if you design a lesson which is mm -hmm. very good, uh, at, attract those teachers, maybe paying their interest, maybe it worked to convince them. So we suggested that, then we come back. <laughs> and that's it. Excellent. Excellent. Thank that that's that's excellent, actually. Uh, and I remind you that you have also the contacts of our Amgen teach, uh, teachers, sorry, ambassadors, uh, in the website. So you, you can contact them and uh, you can reach out to them on this specific topic, IBSE. Um, 
I know that we merged the two groups uh, on teacher training, but maybe Martina, would you like to add something to what uh, Jali mentioned? Um, yes, I noticed the same points actually that uh, younger teachers are more um, willing to learn more about um, IB, um, IBL and to apply that in their teaching. And I actually, I think Jelly summarized the, the, the discussion and the main points very much, very well. So yeah, from my, from my side, it's not much to add actually. Thank you so much. Thank you both for taking uh, uh, charge of this uh, topic. I kindly ask you to mute your microphones because it, there's an echo, uh, if that's OK. Thank you so much. Um, before we go to the last topic, are there any questions either to Jordi and Mattia or to Jolly and Martina? We are sharing on the chat uh, all the resources that were shared. And of course, uh, we will send you afterwards along with the recording. We will share with you also these URLs that were shared during the webinar, OK? OK, so I see there are no questions for now. Uh, so I still don't have Adriana. Uh, sorry, I still don't have Miriam. I have Adriana. <laughs> so uh, Adriana, how was the remote teaching group? Hello. Well, it was interesting. It was short also, but uh, I guess most of the people in my group, they were a bit shy. <laughs> mm -hmm. So big thanks to Liliana because she really engaged and a lot of uh, some people also engaged in the chat. I had prepared uh, quite a lot of uh, Mentimeter and Padlet, so we had a very uh, interactive session. And I'll just share the ones we, we managed to get the results. Sure. Um, it's going to be fast. So the first was what method have you been using for online teaching? And most of them voted for synchronous. C can you see my screen, by the way? Yes, 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 oh. yes. yes. Um, but uh, they also, well, some of them also pointed out that they they like to use both, not only synchronous or not only asynchronous, but the mix of it. And then we moved on to the platforms that they use most for remote teaching and learning. And these were the ones they mentioned, uh, Google Suit, Live Live Webinar. They also mentioned some security issues and uh, a need for uh, integrated, uh, they said that everyone should have an effort, make a, a big effort to, to combat um, hackers and some kind of security issues in the live sessions. Then we move to the what tools and apps they recommend for feedback and everyone said forms and then I asked which forms and most of them said Google forms for assessment. And then I had prepared also a Padlet, but we didn't have time to get there. So I'll share also this link. So I would like to know the benefits from IBSC towards remote teaching and then the challenges. And I'll share all these links so the others can participate and see what the teachers are talking about. It would be nice to see. And finally, mm -hmm. we ended with the discussion of uh, is IBSC in remote teaching a reality or a dream? And all of them said it's a reality, so it's very good. And uh, they just said that it needs a lot of hard work and preparation before. Um, for the rest, uh, yeah, I think uh, that was about it, uh, what I, I noted down from the session, but it was very good. Thank you everyone Excellent. that participated. Thanks. Adriana, uh, it's a, it's a very interesting to see your results, and uh, I actually see already on the chat um, some requests to share those uh, padlets, those two padlets, uh, because they oh, want to add the uh, yes, please, because they want to add their their thoughts and their comments. So everybody is uh, actually welcome to continue the participation in these um, in these padlets and share your thoughts and share uh, your comments, share your experiences, um, and somehow um, continue the discussion even uh, at distance. So um, to finalize, actually, we are coming to the end of this webinar. 
to finalize, I would like to thank all the guest speakers that were here in the main part, the in the first part, sorry, not the main part, the first part that uh, actually introduced and inspired us with several examples of uh, several platforms and several projects on how EBS, IBSC can be implemented from home. Um, and uh, I think uh, we got a lot of inspiration and excellent examples. Um, and um, this second part, I would also like to really thank uh, Jordi, Mattia, Miriam, Adriana, Jali, and Martina for helping us the, in the moderation of these discussions. Uh, it seems, it always seems, uh, when a discussion is interesting, it always seems like it's uh, not much, uh, not enough time. But at least we know that uh, these are the main uh, issues and the main topics actually that are burning in our heads. And who knows, we can do a follow up on these items, um, on these topics. So um, I would like, uh, to thank you also as uh, attendees and as participants for uh, actually engaging in the discussions and engaging engaging in the program and uh, we will send uh, everything to you afterwards in one message uh, recording uh, all the resources the presentation everything um, and I would like also to remind you that we have a quick evaluation form uh, that we kindly ask you to complete uh, Thomas is already sharing that um, in the chat, so please take five minutes just to complete that evaluation form. Okay, the certificates will also follow uh, shortly. And uh, as my last word, I would like just to uh, say again, thank you and keep the faith. We will manage all together, learning from each other. And I hope that you had. Uh, a nice afternoon as much as I did. So thank you all and I'll see you around.